care. It had fun. And he said how beautifully seamless everything looked. Did you agree with his review? I agree with everything except the B-movie portion of it. This is an A-plus movie <laughs> at its finest. Is Battleship I mean, this, an A-plus movie? Battleship is an A-plus plus movie. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this thing has got, it's obviously, it's got the budget, but it's got the people behind the scenes as well. But then it's also got the cast. Like, that is not a B a B movie no. cast. A, I mean, A-level cast. That is an A-level cast. I mean, that was Chris O'Donnell at his prime. I yep. think people forget how big he was there, you know, mid-90s through the mid-2000s. Like, he was yeah. huge. I mean, Scent of a you Woman, know, then got, the Batman movies. Like, he was big, O'Donnell. Yeah, and you got you got Billy Paxton, who's, oh I mean, people love him, and he's probably one of the more underrated actors that have that have come out of Hollywood. My goal plays, is to cover. He plays a really good bad guy. My goal is to cover every Bill Paxton movie. So we've done Near Dark, we've done True Lies. I just love how Paxton, while watching this movie, you like him. So I think I kind of get what he wants to survive at. Remember, I love when the guy's injured. And Tom McLaren's injury, he's like, you're going to die, man. Just, like, kill yourself so we can live. Yeah. I, I, it, but then you're kind of like, yeah, Paxton, like, I think you're so likable. I'm, I'm with you. Like, he's, he, he does Come this on, super Tom. slimy. You're a, you're, you're a mountain climber. You knew the risks. <laughs> I mean, he, but, like, his, his ability to turn on the charm and then flip that, that evil switch is pretty, pretty flawless in this movie. Like, he's incredibly charming and charismatic. And then he's a total a hole a minute later, and you, I, you buy into it. I love it. I, I just think he's perfect in this role. And also, I gotta say, uh, one of my actually, you and I, I think, have the, our two favorite. We're both big James Bond fans, and we think that Goldeneye and Casino Royale have probably. I, I hate seeing this term, the best Bond women, oh, girl, Bond girls, but you know, Bond women. Mm -hmm. And then that's what by. Um, uh, Isabella Skorup, Skorupko, I play Monique, and then I like Eva Green in um, what the the Vesper Casino Royale. Yeah. But I Vesper love Lynn. I love Isabella in Goldeneye, and she's in this movie. She's reunited with Martin Campbell, who also did Goldeneye. But mm -hmm. I got to tell you something: between Goldeneye, Vertical Limit, and Reign of Fire, Isabella's in my what I call the Jump trilogy. Yeah. So in the beginning of Goldeneye, the bungee jump. Yep. Right. And, the, and then, so you have that, the bungee jump. And then you have Reign of Fire, Matthew McConaughey floating for 35 feet and then being eaten by a dragon. For a, yep. Right? And then you have this one, which features, okay. The greatest the trailer in moment. the history. Right? Yeah, great trailer moment, too. Okay, because remember when Skyscraper came, came out, right? Everyone was laughing about that jump. I wrote that article about it, and it got, like, I made a graphic for it, and I think it got, like, a million views in the first day. As far as, like, because I compared it to all the other jumps. I wasn't making fun of it, but everyone was laughing about it. This jump in Vertical Limit, you watch it and you're like, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hard not to get pumped up for it. I mean, it just, like, the leap looks badass. I mean, it's his arms would be ripped out of their sockets. Uh, you know, every part of him would be bruised and broken. But I would say it's one of the best trailer moments of the 2000s. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guarantee you, Tom... I don't know why I said Tom, but that movie, that scene in the trailer made the movie an extra 50 million. What do you I think? can see that. Right? I, it the, may have made it, it may have made it the extra 215.7 million. Yeah. Cause <laughs> you, I was 18 when this came out. How, how old were you? Uh, 14 or so. 15. So, oh, wow. So from a 14, 15 year old, you're sitting there watching the trailer for this movie at the Super Bowl or something. Cause I think this had a Super Bowl ad. What did 14, 15 year old Tom think of that jump? I don't know if I can disclose what happened, <laughs> especially at that age. You had an awakening. <laughs> I had I had a Highlander awakening oh, somewhere. Gosh. That's no, terrible. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like you always have those moments, especially in in these big action adventure movies, where you kind of have that, for lack of a better term, that oh shit moment. And that's exactly what this moment is in that trailer. So it's like, you know, you, it's kind of the run of the mill action scenes, avalanches, that type of thing. And all of a sudden you've got this guy literally jumping a mountain from one mountain to the other. And you're just like, that is so awesome. And, uh, and you're yeah. like, that's like, that's like what I do, like with, you know, my action figures when I was young. It was you that know, one like, of your, was that one of your cats? 
That is, I'm sorry. Oh no, that's awesome. So we, uh, I just did a podcast, a Blade Two podcast, and uh, in that one we had a cat visit. So I, I welcome any and all cat visits during the podcast. Which yes, one? This is you? this is Beckett. Uh, she's named after the uh, the lead from Castle. <laughs> and also, if you ever become friends with Tom, just find him somewhere and get on his Christmas list. His cards are the best. <laughs> you have your cat cards. No, but yes. Yeah, so so I, I guess. Going back to the the jump, but I, man, what a jump, right? It was just so the the cool thing about that is so to bring people up with the storyline of it, it's like they finally <laughs> are scaling up the mountain, and they think yeah. that they're like on the home stretch to get to the crevasse where the people are trapped, and all of a sudden there's this giant like four thousand foot gap in the mountains. And it's like he doesn't even think like they just like him and um. Monique get up there and they both are just like oh crap you know what do we do now and like there's no thinking you know there's no there's no thought process whatsoever and he straps on his helmet ties a rope around his waist and he just grabs two ice picks and that is a great run leading up to that jump too like that's an awesome run and he just launches himself off that thing you know dual ice pick swinging and latches into that but in the behind the scenes stuff, when you if you ever were able oh, yeah, to watch it, oh yeah, tell me it, about it. Yeah, I want to hear about this. Okay, so they they built this platform literally out there on the mountains, and so they had they had a crane that was up over it as well, and they literally strapped Chris O'Donnell to this thing, and he ran off the platform. It was almost like a pendulum swing from like one side to the next. Wow. And so I just think that's what's what's awesome is that like these these cast members were out there doing this stuff themselves, hanging from mountains, you know, thousands of feet up, you know, just having fun with it. And I, and, and it reflects, it shows. That's probably why I wanted Isabella too, because she had a great physicality, but I don't understand one line in this movie. So there's a scene, there's a guy I really like a lot in this movie. He was uh skip Taylor. I liked him a lot. That guy. Yes. Robert, uh, uh, Robert Taylor Walt Longmire. Yep. But, um, wait, what long? Oh, that's Longmire. That is Longmire. That is a young, handsome Longmire. Wow. Uh, that's I like that. But he's explaining Monique, and he goes, she's French-Canadian. Sometimes she's Canadian, sometimes she's French. And I just <laughs> thought to myself, she they must have written this just randomly and then cast Isabella. I, they should have, because that made no sense to me about her being a French-Canadian. She had no accent, no, it was a weird, am I... Do you th it's not, uh, well, it, is, it is kind of weird, especially when so she in the scene she's angry at that moment and she's snapping back at, at Skip Taylor. She's really bad and at cutting open letters. I got to tell you, she is bad at cutting. I'm glad she didn't <laughs> cut off her fingers. They would have had to find someone else to go up that mountain if she had she had done that. So it's like Skip is like the the managerial director of the base camp. So these they actually have these crazy base camps that are on all of these mountains. And it is. It's like, a, from what I have understand, it, it turns into these giant parties, but they also have to have administrative people that run these base camps. So Skip Taylor, uh, Robert, I'm sorry, yeah, Skip Taylor is Robert Taylor. He's like the director of the base camp. And then Mike Monique, like, is like the, you know, handles the day-to-day -day runnings of the thing. And so she's right under him. So they're getting into this little argument, and he drops that line that she's French-Canadian. Some days she's Canadian, some days she's French. Today she's French. Which I didn't get either because it's, you know, I thought French people for the most part were pretty nice. It was a very, uh, yeah, it was weird. It was an interesting line about that. But I think uh, they're just, I think they're just trying to give give Robert Taylor more lines because his his Australian accent is so great. Yeah, that guy's all. And, all right, so I want the guy. You know, the guy who shot this, Dave Tattersall. Have you seen his his IMDb page? I have not. And so you got to know why this movie looks as Look good as it does. He shot Con Air, right? Okay. Your favorite movie on the planet. Then he did Soldier, which we covered on the podcast. Then yep. he did episode uh, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Then he went and did Green Mile, which is a beautiful looking film. He did all the young Indiana Jones. And then he went and he did Vertical Limit. But I think his work on Phantom Menace helped the green screen work on this immensely. I can see that. Because that's all Star Wars was. It was just green, blue screen. 
So I, I think he really aided them. But then he went on to do The Majestic with Frank Darabont. Frank Darabont loved him too, by the way. Mm-hmm. Then he did, get this, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, Die Another Day. You can say whatever you want about that movie. It's It, it looks beautiful. Uh, and then he went and did Revenge of the Sith, right? Then he did Next, which is a little next. But Speed Racer, dude. He did Speed Racer, which I love. Then he went and did the pilot for Walking Dead with Frank Darabont again. Like, this guy has shot some, like, he hasn't done, his last kind of movies haven't been too big. He did Longest Ride in 2015. That looks, oh, he did Foreigner, too, with... Um, yeah, the new the new Campbell movie. Yeah, so this guy is talented, man. Like, he's a, the shot, like, I think they do their best, uh, they, they do a good job capturing the the scale of the mountain, I would say, on that. Yeah, they do. They do. I, I don't know. Yeah, so, I think that's also a thing like I I like about it, too, is that they're not this is something that that in the behind the scenes that Martin Campbell expresses that like a lot of, you know, there's not a ton of mountain climbing movies out there. It's a pretty limited list, but it's like the ones that you do see, like you can tell that it's built sets, you know, they're in a confined space. This movie isn't doesn't do that. It definitely takes a step back at almost every single shot. The camera is always moving. So you're not always just looking at something like in a 2D field. So the camera's moving and giving depth. So you're always seeing what's behind the actors and the the characters of the movie. And it's always some giant landscape that's behind these people. Can I ask you a dumb question? What would happen if it was Robert Robin Tooney saving Chris O'Donnell? Would it have been more interesting? That is an interesting question. Because I like I Chris, I like Chris O'Donnell in this movie, but when I think about this movie, I think more about Bill Paxton, Isabella, Ben Mendelsohn, those characters. I don't really Chris O'Donnell's great. I, I, there's nothing wrong with Chris O'Donnell in this movie, but would you think she it would have been a more interesting angle to have her on that? It would have been an interesting angle. Um, I mean, you could do it in 2000, probably the way blockbusters were, which is a shame. Yeah, that would have been a hard sell back then. I don't know. That's interesting. How do you feel about all the people who die in this movie for bad decisions? So I was – so really quick, I was thinking about this last night that the only people that you really have like an in-depth backstory for is Peter Nanny Garrett, the the siblings. Yeah. Because you've got that that intro scene. Everybody else is like living in the present. So after their father's death, it skips to three years later to where where – Annie is taking Elliot Vaughn up the mountain for his inaugural flight of his his airline so he can wave as it passes over K2, which is kind of a small detail that's that's in the dialogue. But it's, you know, I never really picked up on it for the first several times that I've seen this movie. Like that was his main reason for going up was to literally wave at his airplane for promotional thing as it went over the top of K2. But it's like all these characters, they don't have a huge backstory but they're all very believable, and they all have like their own characteristics and personality. Wait, you so get, I've always, yeah. I've always really liked that about that, especially like the the brothers, Ben Mendelsohn and uh, I can't think of the other guy's name, um, who are who are supposedly based off of two twin brothers that are are actual mountain climbers. They're not like in their seventies, but they were pretty big time back in the seventies and eighties. It was uh, Cyril and Malcolm played by Steve Lay Mar- Marquan and then Ben Mendelsohn, Mendelsohn and then Malcolm and Cyril. Cyril Yes. Cyril So what was your what was your question again about all the, the deaths with them? Okay, so you have Bill Paxton going up and he just bosses around Annie and he bosses around Tom McLaren, which is a great the if, team leader. Yes. I like that two of the people in this movie, McLaren and another of the character named after like classic drivers. I don't know if you remember that. You know, car makers. Mm-hmm. But, uh, no drivers, but he takes them up. He bosses them into it. They're kind of, they kind of bow beneath him a little bit. And he makes a terrible decision about keep on moving forward. They get trapped. Then Chris O'Donnell is like, I need five people to strap nitro on their backs and come rescue my sister (laughs) because they made a terrible idea. So I get why, uh, Kareem comes with them. Right, I get that because he wants to go save his cousin. Yes, Aleg- Alexander uh, Siddig. Yeah, and he's good in this movie. I like I like he's his character, good. but he just gets wiped out and then no one remembers him. And then you get Cyril and Malcolm who join 
and then they get five hundred thousand dollars for that. And then you get Isabella, who comes because she got she gets five hundred thousand, wants to go to France to resume resume her nursing degree. And then you get Scott. 